is going on guys today we're looking at the best meta midfielders you can get in fc24 we're going to go from the low budget all the way up into the top end and there is a lot to go for so let's just get straight in with the low budget now we're looking anywhere between like 30 to 60 70 000 coins on this one now straight away edison he isn't actually available anymore because the match has actually finished but i had to put him in here because it was perfect for this card maybe not for leverkusen streak they got demolished i must admit but edison as a 94 which he's going to be looks like he could be quite a nice card if you just did the generic double upgrade on everything he'll go to 94 keeps his triple play style plus would have been nice to get the 5-5 five five on him but unfortunately we don't get that but if you think 92 pace 89 shooting 93 on the passing 95 89 and 90 that's really not a bad card for 50,000 coins now i know he's probably not going to do that I, I hope they do go the double upgrade because as a box to box that could actually be a really nice one with chemistry style added on we then have some of the players that you can go buy zachariah now i'm not saying these are going to be absolutely elite worthy but they will definitely give you a helping hand if you are starting into the team of the season. If you've just joined into Ultimate Team. I don't know if we're actually free on the Game Pass yet or in EA Store. I don't know if that's actually a thing yet. But that's going to be a nice kind of selection with Zachariah, Ruben Neves, even a bit of Job. Definitely not the worst player you can get. I feel like they did him pretty nicely. We have Patry from Liga F. We have McAllister from the Prem. And then also Sergio Busquets who is... Possibly the best passer in the game, purely on the fact, triple play style plus, all passing, incisive long ball and tiki taka, and 99 passing. Everything's 99, bar from the 97 crossing that he's got, which is absolutely fine, because I don't need him crossing anyway. But in terms of on the ball, phenomenal. Now, all of these are definitely the cheaper options you can go for. Let's look one up. Are you looking for coins to improve your team? Then you need to head over to lootbar.gg, the most reliable and the best coin service you can find. Also, they have incredible 24-hour manual customer service that you physically cannot find anywhere else. But before finishing on lootbar.gg, make sure you are using JT11 to get 8% off coupon. Once you've gone through the payment, you'll be able to get your coins within the next 24 hours absolutely guaranteed also with the code you'll be able to get five percent more coins on every transaction make sure you do click the link either in the description or down in the comment section below now then we've got one up now i think the price that we're looking at is between about 300 to 100 give or take as we go a bit further down so buzz line here as a cheeky little cam that you can go for um, i love the triple play style plus from traveller technical bit of dead ball obviously if you want one in your team to have at least free kick capabilities it might not be the best player in the world in in terms of all well in terms of team of the season but he definitely can get you by ruben loftus cheek love him think he's a fantastic card glad that he actually get one upgrade and the big thing especially with these lower team of the seasons the 91s 92s 93s a lot of them have had the chance to go up at least one rating with the obvious two there we've got sabozalai and loftus cheek and also santos were able to go up in a live fashion as well so they had the chance of a double upgrade some of them managed to get both of them loftus cheek only managed one unfortunately but then you could also upgrade a lot of them one more time as well so my loftus cheek is 94 he could have potentially been 95 instead so if you did pick the right one to get the double upgrade you're absolutely laughing santos great cam the stats are impeccable for 120,000, 5 5 rapid plus finesse cheeky bit of flair not a bad card whatsoever and even if they're not starting for you a great option on the bench at the at the minimum we have madri 209,000 with a 5-4. Again, nice cam going forward. You'll see kind of the same with a lot of these team of the seasons, especially in the kind of positions they're going with. Cams will have great pace, great shooting, great passing, great dribbling, potentially great physicality, but not always. And then defending's kind of a little bit up there. Box to boxes now are like 90 stats across the board. DMs are like 94, 95 defending. Great physical, great pace, great dribbling. And then even the... Uh, what did I say? Great passing, sorry. And then pace is dependent. Like, we look at someone like a Fred. I know he's not naturally a full DM, but he's got everything bar from the shooting. Everything else is above 90. The physicality one-off, which will overstep the mark. But another fantastic box-to-box -box slash CDM. 
Palacios was a lovely card that you could have upgraded as well. Lovely uh, SBC. 240 I thought was a bit expensive for him. I, I weren't quite sold massively. But with an upgrade from the Evolution again, not necessarily the worst. Simons, the cheapest cam you could have got in the Bundesliga. I think he's brilliant. The main thing when it comes to cams now, and we see it with the likes of Foden, we see it with Musiala, we see it with Royce. Their dribbling ability now, the agility balance has been absolutely skyrocketed. And it just makes them so responsive. If they have that five-star skills as well, you are into an absolute winner. We'd still have some icons. I think icons are going to be in the next one as well. We have Xabi Alonso and Rivaldo looking at cheaper icons because not everybody wants a full team at a season team. Maybe you love a bit of Rivaldo. Xabi Alonso was your DM hero growing up, your Liverpool legend, Bayern Munich, the manager of the season. Like you, you could have multiple reasons to have the icons. So they are cheap enough now where I'm like, you can throw them in. Like You put a Xabi Alonso with a Fred, a Loftus-Cheek, a, a go further up into a, a Foden. They're going to complement each other still. They're not necessarily useless. They're just necessarily, they're just not the focus at the moment. Icons and heroes will be the focus, I can imagine, in the Euros, in potential shapeshifters, and back into footies. Right now, it's all about the players, and that is what normally Team of the Season does bring. Isco, I thought, was a great rating increase. Isn't necessarily a, a massive sell for me, but pinged past Traveller Technical, five-star skiller. He's now 94, which is just crazy to me. But again, not a bad card to go into. It's a little bit more expensive. I thought he would have been that little bit more cheaper. Gundogan, great center mid card. Obviously, he's got the Anticipate, which I'm a big fan of. And when it comes to a box-to-box, -box, when it comes to playstyle pluses... If I can get a, de a defensive play style, maybe attacking, it's not or, or shooting, it's not necessarily the 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 go-to. At least a defensive. Then if we got a passing like Tiki Taka, incisive long ball, and then either a running one or potentially something shooting based, it's a nice balance across the mid for me. Now we do go up into a couple of the higher budgets. We can see that we've got some icons here. Some of them may be here because of obviously SBC price as well. Makalele, Essien, Yaya, all available in SBCs at this moment in time. And again, they're not necessarily the worst options in the world. When it comes to actually spending six, 700k though, this is the problem with team of the season, which happens to the backlog of SBCs, like things that have been here for like 60 days, they do look quite expensive in comparison to your friends who's 200k. You look at some of the other cheaper options. We look at a Cam and Vinger at 380. Is he better than Essien and Makaleli, who are both at least 100 to 250,000 more than him in an SBC price? Same with Yaya incredible player he's never going to be beaten in, in in terms of a player that can just go from the very start get minimal upgrades like the press proven the bruiser he's still very very good in the game but when we get to the top if you've managed to get lucky and pack somebody then unfortunately he is going to be tossed to the sideline until we get into that triple play style plus for the heroes cherokee i think is always a brilliant card i loved him last year i felt like he was an absolutely unbelievable card today he comes back with a league and moments and again with a 5-5 great dribbling on him and he's even got that pace and shooting to go along with it Conte was one of the first mix upgrades 370,000 for this 94 dm intercept relentless anticipate Conte's back that is a star-studded cdm if I've ever seen one Odin guard was a great sbc as well he came as the first prem First or second Prem, I know Alvarez was up there as well, but another brilliant card that you could go for. That, To be fair, for a Prem SBC at 400, I felt like they did pretty well for that. I, I was more than happy to pay it. He's a 5-4. We already had Havertz as well as the live card that looked nuts in himself as well. So you could get a double Arsenal player if you really wanted to from just SBCs. Stanway, another great CDM, kind of like Conte, intercept, first touch technical, she's got that defensive ability and also a bit of going forward as well, everything above 90, I mean that's perfect to me. We then have Marco Royce, the second lowest Bundesliga can, there was four in total I'm pretty sure, we had, uh, what is it, Musiala, Verts. Royce and Simons all in one team. I knew they liked cams, but <laughs> that's just ridiculous. But the Royce card, I think, is nice. I am surprised that he's not cheaper by now. I think he was a very, very good card. The, the left stick dribbling, the passing all together really, really worked for this card. 
and I can imagine we will get an end of end of an era one, but I can imagine they will wait for kind of Cruz and do like a whole bit of a week for end of eras because he's now got to have it's got to be like a 98, 99 for the end of era, so it would only make sense to do him at the end of the game. Kaka and Cholton, still very good cams in the game. I wouldn't complain at both of them. They are now coming in at a price where I'm like, okay, we could actually afford them, to be fair. Normally, they were sitting in a mil, two, three mil plus. Now, coming down to 600, making these players, if a lot of people would love Kaka, a very affordable cam to go for. And he still would give you absolutely everything. Now, I think this is where it starts to get a little bit more tasty. It's where everybody starts to get a player where you're like, okay, he's definitely, he or she, in fact mind my language, they are actually getting into the team. We look at the two icons in Abile, beautiful SBC that you can go for. Socrates, Socrates as another SBC that you can go for as well. I, I don't think they're bad options at all. Little bit expensive compared to the, the, the players around them, but as an SBC, that, that's the whole point. You can go and do them. You don't have to spend any coins getting them you obviously for the fodder but you can obviously go get them for all of your fodder that you're not using so there is an option there and socrates with a 5-5 is stunning when we look at some of the team of the seasons though i've kind of gone with the Di maria palmer here they are coming in a little bit expensive but if you've used any of them the dribbling capabilities of them in a cam is exquisite now both of them definitely can play in that right hand side both of them have the ability to Di Maria can play striker as well I don't think Palmer can no camel right wing but Di Maria is that jack of all trades whenever he gets a high rated card you just know about it he's a 5-4 great play style pluses bar from the trickster not a fan of it some people may be but he definitely makes it work the same as Palmer Taurum beautiful card he's kind of like that Stanway everything's above 90 and he makes sure you knows it 745 i thought was really cheap for him as well because we know what body type he's like he's six foot four as well he's an absolute monster in the middle ramirez is well ramirez definitely schneider is still unbelievable like 960 he's come down a lot but he is genuinely still crazy a 5-5 cam he was kind of the original goat when it came to that fantasy heroes and most definitely still carries it to this day ramirez i think has dropped off as a center mid a little bit but we are waiting for that next upgrade for him i said this from the very beginning him and also company them two together as the new heroes once we got into the footage into that 95 and above hero they are going to be the the ones you go for he's going to be incredibly statted he hopefully gets good play style pluses and maybe even a cheeky 5-5 five five. he will be unbelievable now grace is unbelievable we managed to get a very very fortunately out of the what was it the 80 was it the 81 times five or something the the lee gun slash d1 uh kind of pack that you get every two days we managed to get her and i said i wasn't going to do it again and they managed to give me her and she is unbelievable incredible to defensive great at bringing the ball forward she's had a couple of goals but that's not the main attribute for her the defensive side of her is incredible and now drop into 880 i think she was about 2 million when i packed her just stunning is is not the words Goretzka, the original OG when it comes to a Hullet Gang card, everything above 90s, 1.1, which I would say is pretty cheap for him. To say I know what's coming in the next kind of pages, I, I think that is an absolute steal. Intercept, one of the perfect for a DM responsibility. First touch, always take, and an incisive pass. Five-star weak foot. That, that card is, is broken. We've had many years of the Goretzka-Kimmich partnership, and he still holds this torch today. Unfortunately, Kimmich didn't manage to get anything, so it just is what it is. Now, I don't think I've ever seen two identical cards in a, a Premier League team of the season quite like Rice and Rodri. Now, Rodri's six foot three, Rice is six foot one. It's probably the only difference you're going to have other than the play style pluses and the five star weak foot. Stat wise, very similar across the board. Like Rice has a little bit more pace, whereas Rodri has a bit more shooting. Both the same passing, both the same dribbling, both the same defending, and both the same physical. They are literally the same card. Now, if I was to pick one, I do like the Anticipate, but then I also love the Intercept. Relentless versus, say, Ping, no, say Power Shot, because then we've got kind of, well, to be fair, Rodri is more on your balanced 
defensive, shooting, passing, whereas Rice is more your defensive side. So you could still play them together, but I would definitely have like a Foden in the middle to really wrap up that middle side of stuff. But both of them are outstanding in their own rights and, and both of them are 1.2 mil as well now we're looking between about 1.1 and also about 2 million give or take here Firmino is kind of thrown in there I like the card I don't know if I'd choose him over a lot of these 1.1 cards because I do think he's very very good but he doesn't offer as much as the rest in that position the one thing that I do like about him though is he does have that cam center forward vibe but whether that's going to be better than Foden whether it's going to be better than Bruno Musiala Verts is very questionable it will all depend on after Friday because he still impacts until Sunday how much he goes down if he's looking into that 700k mark then I could kind of understand a bit more at the 1.1 I still think he's that tad expensive Havertz SPC has obviously finished by now but I had to show off this card 94 rated I want to say he was upgradable. I, I can't remember if he was one of the ones that couldn't be because that would have broken the card. I don't think it was, but the main problem we had with the SBC was you was able to upgrade literally about a week before, or at least at the time, the 87 left back as well. So you got like a 90, was it a 92? I think it was a 92 left back or at the time, like a 92, yeah, it was a 92 uh, center mid. So you had almost two of the same cards in two positions, both being very meta. And then the 94 happened, which just made him even better. Bruno obviously has got to be up here. Unfortunately, I don't think he got any upgrades, but we still move with him. He managed to get the 94 on the base, which is nice. And I do think he's always a good cam. 1.2 might be a bit expensive. I think that is Prem slash Manchester United tax. Matthias in an SBC, I think if you've not managed to get any of these or anybody in the one above, he's a must SBC at some point because he is just phenomenal. The only thing when it comes to a million coins or more SBCs, especially now for icons, is we are we are very close to the end of the team of the season. We've got Serie A, we've got the Ultimate, and then we go straight into either Shapeshifters or Euros. I think if what what we got so we've got this week coming then we have one more week i want to say the you i know yeah i want to say then so we will have basically like a week break i don't think they'll do shapeshifters in that and then the euro starts i'm pretty sure on that week so i don't think we get any break in between so i reckon they go straight into the icon and heroes which means there could be a possibility of any of the icons they've given out they get the upgrade first because that's how it works. Just look how Tevez went. We have Zico in here. Still a phenomenal cam. Still coming in at 1.6, which is just nuts in itself. Again, 5.5 five, cam, Brazilian, just everything. We do have a lot of decent team of the seasons as we go forward now. Emery, beautiful upgrade from his 90 future stars into this beautiful 95. Hullet gang material, intercept, first touch, technical, everything you need. KDB, incisive, pinged pass, and also a long ball pass, very much like Busquets in the 99. They kind of go next level to each other, but I would say KDB as an attacking player because defensively he's okay, but he's not. He's a cam. He, he, that, that is his position. He's a cam, and he most definitely rocks it out. Whereas we do have free cams that are arguably up there because of their other ability. I don't think they have the passing like KDP, but the attacking threat, the shooting, the, the the running with the ball, they all possess everything. Foden's definitely my favorite out of the three, but I don't know if that's a bit biased because I managed to pack him and then I didn't get a Musiala reverts, which I would have loved. Two mil, uh, 1.7, and then also 1.8. They all are insane cams. The dribbling ability across all of them is phenomenal. Musiala with the 99, 97, 96. The agility balance that goes between them is next level. And before we get into the final team, I totally missed him. I don't know how I missed him. I just did. I can't go back. I just wanted to say Patrick Vieira is obviously in there. 2.9 mil. Stunning. But we have got the big team. We have a Vatinia who, honestly, when he first came out, I didn't know if they made a mistake or like, I've, I've not heard anything about him. It's not like I sit here watching Liga and week in, week out. I don't know how well he's done, how, how well he is doing. But a 96 team of the season does not come out of nowhere. You've got an 88 in form for him. 
but then to be jumping up eight ratings into the top, top levels, like Bellingham's only a 97, Valverde's only a 96, even Modric, Putielis, Bon Matthew won the women's Ballon d'Or, the women's Ballon d'Or, is only 97, so he's got to be doing something right. And most definitely, it just couldn't have given him 90 physical, could they? Just that little bit extra. 5-5, five, five, pinged pass, long ball, power shot is a perfect centre mid you could have got. We obviously have some of the icons still. I think Perlo still to this day is an incredible passer. We are looking at Perlo. We're looking at KDB and then Armand Busquets in them sort of categories. And they all absolutely work it. Ronaldinho, Pele, Hullet, Zidane are the main culprits in the midfield and obviously Vieira. They are all always going to be inc incredible. And whether we see a 99 at some point, Pele's really got to be there. I'd kind of be disappointed if they only give him a 98. And whether we get cover stars again, that could be the, the kind of end for a Ronaldinho 98-99 as well. Zidane is always good as a box-to-box -box cam player. He, he kind of, he's not defensively, but his just build just works for that sort of centre mid role. Hullet can go anywhere and he's still top dog in everything. But the team in the seasons, Valverde, I was disappointed that they didn't give him 90 passing. I'm not going to lie. I felt like the stats could have been better. He is still unreal. He's still insane. But I do think I was, kind of, I think the hype of when he first got his gold, we saw the pace kind of like Ramirez, where his informs were going. And then he kind of just, he got the rating up there, but I felt like like he's only got 196, and I know that's not how it works, but I just felt like his stats could have been better. I don't know. Let me know what you think. He's still unreal, but I just felt like the card could have looked better on the base stats. Putielis and Bon Matti, both with the same team of the years, and still both insane. We've managed to get Putielis again. She was my only team of the year from this year, and team of the season moments as well. So we've got two of them, and, and she is just nuts in herself. She's an incredible box-to-box. -box. She works effortlessly next to Grace. Modric, one of the most anticipated ones from that beautiful, was it a 93, or I think it was a 93, from the start of the game, we got this card. That was at the start of the game on the on literally one of the first promos a couple weeks later or a couple months later when he managed to go through 93 rated and we've had him ever since. Now we finally get the upgrade into that 96 and what an upgrade it is. 5-5 five, five, and he's got the anticipate, the incisive and the technical. The stats are absolutely gleaming. The dribbling's insane. The passing's insane. He's well worth it. But the midfielder of the year of the game of everything has got to go to Bellingham. Bellingham is stupid. So, like, his team of the year was not. I felt like when you, when we had, it was it the De Jong, Conte, and somebody else pairing, it just felt broken to have these cards. That is exactly how Bellingham feels. He's quick. His tackling is unreal. His dribbling is crazy. His shooting's good. Everything about this card screams a 9 to 10 mil card easily. So I cannot wait to be able to actually have the ability to get him once we get into footies, no doubt, because that's just what it's going to be. And I can imagine we will see a 99 at some point. He's, he's just got to be there, hasn't he? So that is going to be the list. Let me know who have you got in your midfield. Is it a triple or a duo? Let me know and I'll catch you all for the next one. Peace.